This is the spot. Keep a lookout, okay? I'm going to grab the loot. Now. It was around here somewhere. It's definitely here. I'm a thousand percent sure. Uh, it's not here. You gotta be kidding me. Me and Dirk were the only ones who knew where it was. Wait a minute. That rat! He must have done the dirty on me and taken it for himself. Damn it! I should have known! A thieving little... Wait till I get my hands on it. I'm gonna find him. And you're gonna help me. Okay. The inn we used to crash at is just over there. Come on. It's the only one with an upstairs. You can't miss it. This old place hasn't changed a bit. Back in our thieving days, Dirk and me used to lay low here whenever things got hairy. Ruby? Ruby, you there? It's me, Eric. There's something I need to ask you. Ruby runs the place. Looks like she's not around, but if anyone knows where Dirk is, it's her. Which means we'll have to go find her. So here's the plan. There's a tower they use to look out for fires. You're going to climb up there and keep an eye out for Ruby. I'll check a couple of other spots. Don't worry, you can't miss her. She's the only redhead in town.
get out of here. Go on. find Ruby anywhere. How about you? Any luck? You saw her heading back to the inn? Great! Let's head over there and find out what she knows. Isn't my favorite landlady. Hmm. Welcome to our rumble. <gasps> Strike a light! If it ain't me favorite little tea leaf! Last I heard, they'd locked you up and thrown away the key. Hang about. You've gone and escaped, ain't ya? You? you and your friend here are the fugitives everyone's talking about. Well, I know not to stick me big nose in where it ain't wanted. <laughs> you always did like to sail close to the wind. Don't worry, I won't be here long. I just need to know where Dirk is. Dirk, eh? Now there's a name I ain't heard in a while. Didn't he open some fancy shop up by the castle? Yeah, that was it. Raking in the cash he is, or so they say. That can't be right. The rent up there is crazy. Where would he find the money? Wait a second. He sold it, didn't he? The rat sold the damned orb. Look, in this part of town, you don't go asking too many questions. You know that. If you want more, you'll have to get it from the horse's mouth. You're right. Thanks, Ruby. I appreciate it. We'll get out of your hair. That no good traitor! I'll bet he sold me out and sold the orb. And also he could move up in the world. Well, I'll get what I'm owed. You'll see. <sighs> but we'll need to get past that sentry if we're gonna head uptown and find him. Wait, isn't he? Yeah. I remember hearing that one of the guards is terrified of dogs.
you got here. Welcome, welcome. Feel free to browse. You'll find we only stock the very finest wares. <gasps> That's good. Because I'm looking for something very special indeed. Happen to have any orbs in stock? Uh, Eric! Long time no see, old pal. <laughs> Eric! My, my brother! My compadre! My, my partner in crime! It's, oh, it's really oh, you! Large as life and oh, fighting fit! I'm so oh, happy to see you! You have no shame, huh? Get your backstabbing hands off of me! <sighs> You always were full of it, Dirk. But this really takes the cake. Admit it. You sold me out and sold the orb so you could buy this place, didn't you? I never. I promise you, I never sold you out. I was worried sick about you. I only opened this place to try and help you. Oh, yeah. And how does that work, exactly? How does you opening this place and lining your pockets while I rot in jail help me? Look, I was never much of a thief, you know that. But it turns out I know how to sell stuff. I got a gift, even if I do say so myself. <sighs> when you got nabbed, I spent months racking my brains for ways of busting you out. I couldn't stand the thought of you being in there. In the end, I realised I'd have to give up the orb. I took it to the king, told him I found it somewhere, and pocketed the reward. Then I used the cash to open up the shop here, and poured all my profits into bribing the guards up at the castle so they'd let you escape. Hmm, now that you mention it, I did think it was weird they never tossed my cell the whole time I was digging that hole. Exactly! I was paying him to turn a blind eye, weren't I? <laughs> <sighs> okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Pardon. That's the spirit! Eric, old pal, it's so good to have you back. But I need that orb. And now we don't even know where it is. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. Right this way, gentlemen. So, where is it? After I handed over the orb, I made sure to keep my ears to the ground about where it ended up. I knew it was important to you, see? Well, 
A little bird tells me that Endrick and his men took it to the King's Barrow, and it's been under lock and key there ever since. The King's Barrow, huh? Mm-hmm. That's southeast of town. Same direction as Cobblestone. Which means we can kill two birds with one stone. You coming, Dirk? A little adventure for old time's sake? Sorry, no can do. I got a shop to run and I'm a married man these days. Married? Wow, you really have changed. Well, you always said you wanted to settle down and maybe go into business someday. I'm happy for you. We'd better get going. Take care, Dirk, and thanks for everything. You too, old pal. Be lucky, eh? And don't you two go doing anything I wouldn't do. The South Gate is crawling with guards. We won't be walking out that way. And Hendrick's men are too uptight to take bribes. Guess we'll have to go the long way round. If we skirt round the hills to the south, we should be able to approach the King's Barrow from the other side. We can drop into Cobblestone on the way. Okay, let's head back downtown. Watch yourselves out there, eh? They don't call that forest round there the Mangle Grove for nothing. There's plenty going there and never come out. <laughs> It'll take more than a few kid stories to scare us off. Besides, it's the only way to get there.
sign of them? No, nothing. Let's search the town again. Oh, Look at all those lights. They're pretty keen to find us, huh? We'd better steer clear of Heliodor until the heat dies down. All right, through the Mangle Grove and onto Cobblestone. Let's do this. one.
Look at that, a campsite. And just when we needed one. Still a fair way to cobblestone. Let's rest up for the night. I still can't get over old Dirk. He didn't just go straight, married, shop in the best part of town. He went straighter than straight. Just like that. We used to be thick as thieves. <laughs> Literally. We travel the world, always on the hunt for loot. Ah, those were the days. Oh, speaking of which, I just thought of something we acquired back then that might come in handy. Yep, I've decided. I'm giving it to you. You'll love it. We sure did when we got our hands on it. Behold, the Fun Size Forge. Pop a few raw materials on top, bash them with the Porter Pounder, and bops your uncle. New equipment. And I'm not just talking steel swords and the like. Wooden boomerangs, a natty new jerkin. You name it, this thing can make it. Sweating over a hot forge was never exactly my style. But I have a feeling you'll get more use out of it than I ever did. You can't just go smashing stuff together willy-nilly, though. You'll need the recipe for the piece of equipment you want to make. Here's a little something to get you started. You should strike while the iron's hot. There are recipes hidden all over the place. It, treasure chests and bookshelves are always a good bet. Keep an eye out and you're sure to find some beauties.
chop, 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 chop around the clock. One, two, three, look out, trees. Oh, a woodcutter's life is the life for me. <laughs> what in the world? I repaired the bridge only yesterday, and now some blighter's gone and destroyed it again. If I ever find out who did this, I swear I'll... Ta-da! You called? Tricky devil at your service! <laughs> I went to a lot of trouble to smash at this stupid bridge! I'm not about to let you fix it again! Here! Get a load of my devilishly tricky shapeshift beam! <laughs> One minute you're a silly old woodcutter, the next minute you're a smelly old dog. I'm a devilish genius. <laughs> now, what mischief shall I get up to next? Oh, so much trouble to cause so little time. <laughs> Bye, doggy. Stay. <laughs> treasure chest. I think I've just hit upon my most devilish trick yet. What the heck just happened? You touched that plant and then I saw all this crazy stuff. You really expect me to believe that this mutt here is actually the woodcutter? Huh. There's never a dull moment with you around. I'm gladder every day I broke you out of jail. Well, all I know for sure is that we're never going to get out of this forest until we get that bridge fixed. And if what we just saw was true, Rover here is the only one who can fix it. Why don't we find that chest and have a word with our mischievous friend? Let's head back the way we came and see if we missed it somewhere. Seriously? The only thing I'm shocked by is how lame you are. What did you just... Oh, cheeky devil! Don't you know who I am? I'll teach you for my next trick. I'm gonna beat you to a pulp! Ah! 
Let's do it. Our pal the pooch. <laughs> Not anymore. Thanks to you, I'm back to my old self. I'm Flint the Woodcutter, by the way. And I owe you more than words can possibly say. How can I ever repay you? It's funny you should ask. We were hoping that some kind soul might fix that bridge the monster smashed up. It would be my pleasure. Why don't you go back to my cabin and put your feet up? I'll have it mended for you in no time flat. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. Much obliged. Sorry to have kept you waiting, but I'm happy to announce that the bridge is fixed. In fact, it's even sturdier than ever. You don't hang about, huh? Thanks. You've really helped us out. Now, young fellow, about this vision of me being turned into a dog you saw when you touched that glowing plant. The more I think about it, the more certain I am. What you experienced can only have been the guidance of Yggdrasil. Um, does that mean anything to you? It's something my dear old granddad told me about when I was a boy. Yggdrasil is the giant floating tree at the center of our world, of course. The source of all life, as some call it. If the legends are to be believed, each one of its leaves represents a life and its power preserves the peace and harmony of our realm. The glowing plant you found in the forest is actually a part of Yggdrasil, a piece of root poking through from beneath. It's said that the World Tree can choose to communicate via her roots, but only with certain very special people. And that's what my granddad meant by the guidance of Yggdrasil. He was talking about just such visions as you saw. <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. As a boy, I'd spend hours talking to the silly old thing. But did anything ever happen? Not a bit of it. But you, young man, you're different. You're what? <laughs> so not only are you the luminary, you're also Yggdrasil's favorite little leaf, huh? Some guys have all the luck, I guess. Well, we can't stand around talking about how great you are forever. Come on. 